So I have empowered you today. The yogi's touch moves an energy in the spine of the practitioner. <coughs> this is the dynamic energy called the Kundalini because she arises from the Kund, the bowl at the root chakra. is an electromagnetic reservoir of the energy of the universe which is apportioned to each individual after the completion of their individual solar system there is energy which is left and this energy is tucked away at the bottom of the spine it's an electromagnetic energy which is tucked away at the bottom of the spine in three and a half coils you know, like a wiring in India, they do the wiring of the house and all that and there's excess wire. So they bundle up that excess wire and keep it in the corner in the wall and put it, they bundle up that excess energy, less it's required. Now this is the, the bundling of the, of the excess electromagnetic force, which is within every human body. And it is the birthright of every individual to use this Kundalini Shakti to use this energy for the evolution of one's own consciousness. If humanity were to evolve in its normal pace, at its normal pace, what is the normal pace of the evolution of humanity? How does the normal humanity evolve? It evolves like this. Let us have wine, women and laughter and sermons and soda water the day after. <laughs> Normally human beings are like this, you know. You go home, you're tired, you know. You have a peck of scotch, or you have some nice cool beer in a hot afternoon. You do there, you, you have a nice game of uh, tennis, or so you go swimming, you come back, then Sunday comes, you feel very holy, you go to church, and you pray, and then you're back to your own old ways again and then you go for true confessions and you confess that you shall never do it again and then back you are doing the very thing and you say, I didn't know I was such a person, I'm back to my own ways. My habits are like a pie dog's tail. I try to put my tail down, it curls up again. I put it down, it comes. So this is human nature and if we were to lead a normal life, because in India, we have no such thing as vice and virtue or sin or eternal damnation. These are the, the phrases of a very nascent or childish religion, a religion which is growing out of its infancy. Like we have Christianity, it's a young religion, so have hell, eternal. We have no such thing as vice or virtue or sin or this thing. We have the three gunas called the sattva, raja and the tamagun. So those who are sattvic, they represent luminosity. We say the person is eating a light diet, he's always meditating, doing good deeds to others. We say he's a sattvic person. He has a lot of electrons in him, a lot of luminosity. Then there's another person who's a conqueror and he's very macho, or they're very powerful women also who are very sports-minded, and they go and they win gold medals, they're sports-minded, and one woman, she is she is a very good householder lady, she has 13 children, which is very good for the country, very good for the whole of humanity. For them we say they are rajasic person, rajasic, the quality of the proton, productivity, very active, not subtle, but active and very much leading a good healthy life, bodybuilding, weight lifting. So they are rajasic. And then we have the other third guy, which everybody becomes on Saturday evening or Sunday. <laughs> he is lazy and dull and or he has too much of food and he's sleeping, it's all hunky-dory. That's tamasic, that's inertia. So when we say this person is very inert or this person is very uh, active, you know, activity, or this person is very luminosity is, is very subtle and luminous. So these are the things. So there's no such thing as bad or good or vice and virtue. According to the three qualities which are prevalent at the beginning of creation, 
Humanity is divided into three different categories. A same person can have all the three qualities in different days of the week or different days or different hours of the day. Now, the Kriya Yoga is a scientific pathway to self-realization. And its science, its practice is rooted in the cultivation of love. So it has love and intuition as well as a scientific uh, research and a volition, the will to practice. So will, volition and love, scientific research and intuitive knowledge, it's a very well-balanced technique. Yogis of ancient times discovered that the breath and the mind are very intimately linked to one another. If the breath is slow and calm, the mind shall, the thoughts will be slow and the mind shall be calm. If the breath is agitated and, and very ferocious, ferocious, then the mind also shall have a lot of activity and aggression. If the mind is very intense in, 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 in aggression and in fear and anxiety, the breath will heave heavily. And if the mind is very calm looking at the evening sunset, the breath will run very gently. This is the dynamic and great foundation and contribution of the yogis of India to the world treasury of human health and knowledge. The Western science has not uh, fully discovered the benefits of pranayama, but they are at a very rapid race. And they're trying to form tributaries and make the pranayama come in their own names like aerobics and this and that, they all come from pranayama. It's all basically pranayama techniques. But some people don't have the habit of giving the credit to the original founders, who were the yogis. And they can throw this pran upon a billion people and give them a transmission where all their back aches, headaches, stomach aches, tension, mental uh, aberrations will all disappear. One yogi can affect, if they are attuned to the yogi, he can affect their mind, calm their mind and soothe their nerves, which you will see perhaps sometime during the course of these few hours with me. So the yogis developed a precise and rational science of pranayama, the ayam of pran, not the breath control, but life energy controlled. Breath is like a wire. The life energy is like the electricity running through the wire. The breath is like the wire, but the pran is the electricity running through the breath. So we are dealing with pranayama. And the kundalini is even subtler than the pran, it is the life within the pran. So therefore, to be specific, I will be teaching you the kundalini kriya yoga where you will constantly breathe in the spinal cord. Your breath will run along the central channel of your spine. This is, this is the hallmark of the true Kriya Yoga. If it doesn't run in the central channel of the spine, then there are many people teaching Kriya Yoga. It is not the true Kriya Yoga. It must run in what is called the Sushumna Nadi. That is, there's a thin psychic channel within the spinal cord called the Sushumna. And as you focus as yourself, as you focus on the soul star which represents you moving up and down your spine which is the pathway to self-realization, your body is the temple, you are the soul star and the spinal cord is the pathway to salvation, to enlightenment. I